Jimmy, welcome. Welcome to Fantasy Sports Addicts Anonymous. Uh, this is our fourth podcast. Woo! Woo! Number four. All right. My name is Tom. Hi, Tom. I'm a fantasy sports addict. And my name is Ryan. Howdy, Ryan. Howdy. And I, too, am a fantasy sports addict. That's why we're all here, Fantasy Sports Addicts Anonymous. And uh, today, our topic of conversation will be the 2015 MLB slash fantasy MLB trade deadline. Obviously, the... uh, What is it? The non-waiver deadline has just passed for Major League Baseball. That's July 31st, right? Right. um, So there's been a flurry of moves in that arena um, for our own purposes. Less moves, but we want to talk about moves you might make during fantasy uh, trade season. It's trade season. Really, uh, most leagues, uh, the trade deadline is coming up in less than two weeks 10 days something i know for our leagues we're in it's august 16th so that's eight days from now yeah so it's it's coming up real quick right and if if you're trying to compete or trying to get rid of some dead weight on your roster this is the time to do that time to make some moves time to get aggressive because at this point in the season you know what you are you know your team you know your strengths and your weaknesses and what position you are, and, you know, it's probably a good idea to make moves to... Either improve now or for next year. Improve your outlook next year, right? If this is a dynasty or a multi-year kind of league, right? You always you always want to do what's best for your team going forward. Absolutely. Like, personally, uh, in our keeper leagues, or your keeper league to be exact, I made a flurry of trades just going all in trying to win this year. Um, I managed to land Miguel Cabrera, Hanley Ramirez, and Robinson Cano. That's, all right, that's disgusting, first of all. Second of all, um, I feel like we should just leave that hanging for a moment. We can come back to that. Um, Let's hit the let's hit the questions first. Is that can we oh. hit the questions and then we'll uh, yeah sorry we'll, we'll let we'll let Ryan roster bait after we answer a few questions. All right, so I, I got ahead of myself. So this Q&A. is kind of a new thing. Yeah, we're doing Q and A now. Um, we're getting questions on Twitter. We're getting questions just email on our website. Whatever. It's nice, you know. I mean, if you have any questions that you want us to answer, or just take a stab in the dark at, or really just give you some great advice or bad advice or if you want to make fun of our answers and tell us we suck that's what this portion of the show is for we'll feature your twitter account your whatever your email your name your mom's name whatever you want and the dogs are barking so hey this is q a time dogs are barking baby okay so uh, our first question okay are we, gonna, are we gonna do three again we're gonna do three again okay three questions everybody get ready all right, so our first question, again, we're trying to keep it within the theme. We got baseball and trade. So our first question comes from John. Okay. And Hello, John. He's asking uh, Eric Hosmer and Anthony Rendon for Todd Frazier. Well, uh, woo. All right, so Eric Hosmer, Anthony Rendon for Todd Frazier. Yes. I do believe we kind of disagree on this one. This is one that I have a little special preference. All right, so... Uh, we're talking about corner infielders for the most part, right? We got first and third, guy with first and third eligibility. But let's be honest. I mean, we're talking about Rendon as the centerpiece of this trade, if we're not, uh, I believe. Uh, he's got second base eligibility. So to me, if you need a second baseman and you're, you know, you got to give up Todd Father, yeah, Todd Father's good and that power is really good. But you know, I don't know about the batting average. I don't love it myself. Um, Rendon going forward, finally healthy, like hopefully – Kind of lives up to the hype, kind of lives up to the precedent he set last year. I mean, it's been a rough year, let's face it. That a is rough, nasty rough year. Nasty year for Rendon. But, like, my take on the whole of this is that if you start the year back at scratch, back at zero, Rendon's ranked higher than all of those players, right? Like, he's the highest ranked of all three of those players named. Now, granted, this is for a year-to-year scenario. What's he done lately? Absolute dick, right? Absolutely. Like, he's dicked you over. Which is why I would much rather have Todd Frazier because he's bankable. You know what he wants or know what he offers. And he's offering first-round value, and you're not getting that with Hosmer or Rendon or even combining the two of them together. Like, yes, Hosmer, he's been not great this year, but he's been really good. 
I still just don't trust them as a former Hosmer, you know, owner. Like, yeah, post hype, all that. I get it, but I'd rather have Todd Frazier and whatever second baseman I can find or get or you know trade for someone else. Okay. But I'm I'm keeping Todd Frazier. All right. Well, I mean, again, it, it kind of I I'd, I'd like to see John's lineup. That's always kind of the the wild card in these guessing games that we play here with these questions. Is you know, I mean, does he already have another third baseman? Does he have like Chris Bryant just sitting around or something like that? And to, so Todd Frazier is his first baseman in that sense. Um, you know, I mean, if you can roll the dice on Hosmer and you get that quality production out of second base and you literally had nothing at second, I mean. I don't know. You like the power upside of Frazier. Yes. I like the batting average upside and the overall total production. Runs scored, that kind of thing. Rendon's a great second baseman. He's a good third baseman, but great second baseman. So if you got a hold of Phil, I like that. I don't know. John, that's a that's an interesting question. Fair enough. We, we disagree. And also, I think we disagree on this next uh, question. This is another trade Okay. Um, this is actually a keeper league deal. Okay. And it's Freddie Freeman for Noah Syndergaard. Woo. All right. Yeah, this, to me, not not a chance in hell that I move Noah Syndergaard for Freddie Freeman. And all the Braves fans out there, I apologize. This isn't a knock on the Braves. I don't hate the Braves. I don't even hate Freddie Freeman. I own Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman, like Rendon this year, has been a complete disaster. Now, going forward... Probably not as much of a disaster, but let's face it. The only reason why you have Freddie Freeman in these dynasty leagues is you missed out on all the other good stuff. You know, like if you drafted a few years ago for your dynasty setup, you know, you missed out on Miggy. You probably don't have a Rizzo or a Goldschmidt, something like that. Like, so, you know, Freeman is kind of that last best option at the first base position, right? Which is why I don't trade him for a starting pitcher because let's face it, you can get arms. I, First basemen right. are harder to come by, and you say he's been a disaster. Like, no, he's been injured, but when he has been healthy and has been in the lineup, he's been good. And you know, Good, not great. But Let's, again, you didn't I, draft him to be great. You drafted him to be good at a rather thin position. Like, I drafted him to be better than he has been, and statistically generally has perf- I just... I. I feel like Freeman's that last best option, and the only reason you have him is because you missed out on everything else good. So to me, ace caliber, top flight pitching. There's a lot of pitching out there. We're talking about how we're in a pitching era right now, but ace caliber pitching, something like Noah, it doesn't just stroll into your lineup every day. You know what I mean? So you don't, to me, all right, so if I was moving, if I had the depth to move Noah, personally, I'd probably be asking for something really top flight, like, Maybe an Anthony Rizzo. All right, well, it's aggressive. That's a, but why, why are you even giving up Noah for Freeman? Like, unless you can get something just balls to the wall, balls well, again, out. again, like, it's about, like, return on investment. Like, okay, if this was your first year draft for your dynasty or keeper league, like, you didn't have to spend much money to get Noah. Then you're able to flip him for Freeman, who, yeah, he's been injured and slightly underperforming and all that. But, again... You got a first baseman that's still young and his best years are still ahead of him. And I'd much rather have a first baseman that I know is going to be able to be there and perform for the next 10 years. For only 80 games a season, apparently. You're saying Freeman. I'm saying hang on to Noah. Let's ask this. Who has the higher ceiling, right? Obviously, Noah's younger, but, like, which one's got the higher ceiling, Noah or Freddie Freeman? Freddie Freeman. He plays every day. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? All right. No whatever. doubt about it. We disagree. I, all right, so here's another option. If you've got uh, Noah and you actually have the depth to trade him, you know who else I'd be going for? Again, if there's somebody else that matches up and they got a little depth, they got the ability to move this guy, I'd go for, like, Carlos Correa or something like that. You know, they're both – that's the thing we're forgetting, too. Noah's a rookie. Like, this year has been so filled with prospects and just awesomeness in terms of, like, young call-ups that, like – we forget, like, the way we talk about Noah, it's like he's been around three years or something, you know? So, yeah, I mean, you're saying, yeah, Freddie's a known commodity, and I get that, but, like, I feel like Noah's got the higher ceiling. If you're willing to move that type of pitching, that quality of pitching, you got to go for the gusto, not just, 
Yep, last Again, best option. there's no way I trade any of those players that you're talking about for Noah. Like, I just wouldn't do it. I haven't seen enough of it. Like, yeah, he has the pedigree, but he's one Tommy John away from being waiver wire. Maybe. I again I still I still am inclined to disagree. I would never move Noah for Freddie Freeman personally. Okay. Next question. This next cu- question comes from Nitro Genis Bear. Bear. Okay. All right. Anyway, Have, use your use your real name next time, please, because we don't know what the hell this alias shit is. Right. Whatever. Nitro. What up, okay. Nitro? Woo! Nitro with the question. What is he? Former uh, American. Gladiator, All American Gladiator. Nitro, yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, anyways, Nitro is asking, what can we expect from Chris Bryant and Mikel Franco for the rest of the season? I own I own Bryant in our Roto keeper. Um, I would, both these guys, I would say, don't expect anything more than they've already given you and don't expect a whole lot less. Now, the thing with... Franco versus Bryant to me, I think what you can expect from Franco is hopefully, and this is what I'm hoping for personally, is that he gets some first base eligibility. I don't know about the whole waiver deadline thing and if you know Ryan Howard's going to get the the boot or the trade or whatever. Well, maybe, he's maybe also not. likely to get injured. Well, and just, again, the Phillies are dog shit, so they have no incentive to play veterans and see what they've got in terms of these young guys. And granted, you know, they've already got Franco at third for the most part, but first base eligibility is something I'd like to see. I think that's where he ends up ultimately. Um, and if you're in a, a, a dynasty scenario and you got both those guys, A plus, man, that's your corner corner infield right there for the future. Yeah, Good absolutely. Um, again, I'd still take Brian over Franco all day for the rest yeah. of the season. Yeah, uh, I don't disagree He's with got that. more more power. Um Again, he costed a heck of a lot more going into the the year. So Lord Franco knows I know that. is, yeah. <laughs> I paid what forty five bucks for Bryant in the Something dynasty. Like that. Like, oh, oh god. But anyways, you know, Franco, like he's great. He's all profit at this point. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like again, they're both going to get you around eight to ten home runs for the rest of the year. Okay. Twenty five to thirty RBIs. You know, like. Yes, Brian is in that rookie wall slump right now. Uh, again, his batting average for balls in play like wasn't necessarily sustainable. And, you know, pitchers are making adjustments and game of adjustments, but I have enough confidence in Brian that he'll figure it out and turn it around. Did you just lay down a BABIP analysis? Well, absolutely. Batting average balls in play. Okay, this is way too in depth for our podcast. Christ, it, Ryan, what are you doing here? It, we're it, addicts. We're not. We're not analysis. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, those are three questions. All right, uh, that was you, fun. Yeah, it was fun. Good I like questions. These questions. Keep them coming. Yeah, definitely good questions. Uh, we had a few other ones, but they didn't quite make the cut. But maybe next podcast. Yeah, I'm hoping. You know, if we get more more questions, this actually might lead to fisticuffs on set at some point. Like Ryan and I had a strong disagreement there about Noah. So yeah, again, we kind of tend to disagree more than we agree. This is true, but I mean, hey, hit us with some really good questions next time. Hit us up on uh, Twitter at letter F, letter S, the word double, letter A at F S double A. Send us an email on our website. Up on the message boards, whatever you know how to reach us. Just send us some questions. Uh, see if you can get us to get into a fist fight. We'll do it on camera for you. And then uh, money's on me. Well, I'm not disagreeing with that either, but it'll <laughs> still be good viewership. So all right, all right. So again, we're all here talking about uh, Major League Baseball, fantasy baseball, trade deadlines, and the dogs are really excited about it today, right? Absolutely. Why don't you put those fuckers uh. outside? <laughs> Now they're barking so, at the door and they can't get out. <laughs> it's too goddamn hot to be outside. And this is, oh God, if you have ever been to Arizona in the summer, you know exactly what we're talking about. It rained yesterday. It's 112 degrees right now. It rained last night. How is it 112 degrees? And it's humid. This is the worst weather you could possibly expect on the planet. Like, But hey, the good news is we live here because there's almost year-round baseball, really. Spring training, Arizona Fall League, like doesn't get any better than that. So and we'll put up... You can play golf all the time. Yeah, not all the time. Unless you're a wild man like Ryan and you, golf in, the, you golf in the heat. Who's golfing? Actually, Ryan is uh, going golfing here pretty shortly. 
He's going to go to some hoity-toity Scottsdale shit, and he's going to go golfing. See, I love golfing in the sea because it's dirt cheap and nobody else is out there. All right, I get that nobody else is out there, but I just, oof, oh man. Unless you got like misters on the cart and like, you know, ice cold beer in the back, which sometimes you have, but I don't know, it's just too hot for me. But all right, so speaking of heating up, you know, hopefully your hot stove and your league's heating up. Hopefully you've been able to make some deals yourself, improve your team, or set yourself up for the future. Uh, Ryan and I have both been able to make a few trades in various leagues. Ryan, really, though, like, as he hyped in the beginning of the show, Ooh, yeah. he's thrilled about some of these deals he's made in my league. So let's hear him. What, uh, just, now right, you can so roster and again, tell us. Again, I, I really did go all in. This is, again, a dynasty league or keeper where you keep 20 players every year. And I went all in. I managed to get Miguel Cabrera, Robinson Cano, and Hanley Ramirez. Yeah. Granted, I gave up a ton of prospects, draft picks, and just good players in general to get all these, but I fulfilled my weaknesses. Like, I had Brock Holt as my shortstop. Okay. So I really needed a shortstop. And like, yeah, I know Hanley Ramirez is going to lose his shortstop eligibility, and I might not even keep him. But that's 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 next year's problem. That's exactly. For the, that's for the guy running the team next year, right? Yeah. So, so I got happy about getting those. Again, it was dynasty leagues, and these were lower teams that I traded with or are in the process of rebuilding. Okay. So they were more willing to give up these higher-ranked players who are, let's face it, a little bit older. Well, I was going to say overranked, personally. but With the exception of Miggy. Right. Right. And again, yeah, Robinson Cano, he's not a top 15 player. Hanley Ramirez, no way in hell he is. No, but they fit your needs. They fill out your infield. You have now a whole new infield. And uh, you you had to do that, though, because you had to com- compete with me, right? Like, yeah. that's, I, you know, I'll have to toot my own horn or ring my own <laughs> ring my own sex bell, but I love my teams in, in our leagues. And, uh, you know, the competition's high, you know. You got to keep up with the Joneses. I am the Joneses, so Ryan's keeping up. I, you know, I, I thought about going for Hanley. I am constantly, it seems like, in search of a shortstop. I have never had a middle infield ever in any league, apparently ever. Like, I don't know if it is I can't draft them or I won't pay for them when they're ranked so high. I just have always had like a shit show of a middle infield. Um, you know, I like to focus on top flight pitching. And just the boom, baby. I like the home runs and the top K's, home runs. That's me. I, you know, this, it's actually my style is kind of like your basketball style in that sense, I think. We'll have to compare the two. Yeah, uh, but just different strategies. I went all in. All in for me was giving up Anthony Rendon, like Henry Owens, a couple other prospects, and a first-round pick for my silver tuna. We're eating silver tuna tonight. Uh, I had to go for Jose Fernandez. He's coming off the TJ, uh, but he's been great. So I, you know, I don't know how much he's going to pitch for me down the stretch. But that was like, like I said, that was my silver tuna. That was my big trade this year. I don't I mean, think I'll was, have more. That was a great trade, and it really made me upset. Yeah. Uh, I don't it was know. good for the guy I traded with, though, too. <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw the video that we made where my team blew up where uh-huh. I talked about all the injuries I had where before I made my trades, I literally could not fill a full roster because I had seven DL players. Now you were in like disaster zone. It was like, do you throw in the towel or you keep going? And you, you, this is what our motto is all about, active, competitive, victorious. You went all in, you pushed all your chips across the table and you said, fuck it, I need to goddamn try to win now. And you have, you made some moves that really, oh man, I'll see in hell. I don't know. It's you and me for the championship in my league. And I hate that, I, but it's good. It's good podcasting material, I guess, if one of us wins. And so. we're actually playing this week and you're kicking my ass 92. Yeah, I am. I am blowing you out. I, right I don't feel too bad about that. Cause again, I had Lance McCuller stinker where he gave up what got one out and had an ERA of like 128. So that fucked up my pitching ratios. And I still have Miggy on the DL, George Springer, and John Carlos Stanton. So like That's a lot. My, my three best players are sitting on the DL. And I had a pitching stat 
that just fucked me for the week. Well, and that's, you know, as much as I'm beating you now, let's not forget that my depth probably slightly surpasses yours. I have so much insane hitting. I left two grand slams, two. Two separate grand slams on the bench this week. How do you do that? Like, what, what planet are you on if you're leaving grand slams on the bench in any week, in any league, let alone two in the same week on the same team? I left Cargo's grand slam the other night on the bench. I left uh, Michael Franco's grand slam, uh, what was it, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. I left eight RBIs, two jacks. Like, uh, who leaves eight RBI on the bench? Me. And That's how deep my RBIs team is. RBIs is actually one of the two stats I'm beating you in. By three. But, barring that, you know, I mean, I know you like to count your chickens, but, oh, Miggy's coming back, and, oh, Stan's coming back. Grand slams left on the bench, right? Like, if I ever figure out how to set this fucking lineup appropriately. <laughs> you gotta pray to the fantasy guys to be able to set your ideal lineup. They honestly, I, I mean, that's a lot of praying for me. I have to pray to them every day, and I count on them being right in terms of who I should bench and who I should start. Like, it's tragic. It's And uh, the guys are not happy with you. They're not giving you the proper advice or... No, no, no. My karma is not such that I get good advice. It's really just sort of like up to me to decide. I do okay. I can't complain winning nine to two. (sighs) I don't know. Uh, So... Again, people don't really care to hear so much about our teams. No, no, no. I mean, our teams are our own little slapstick motherfuckery over here. But, you know, I mean, if you got got some trades you want to make... you may or may not have seen our trade etiquette video. Go check it out. You know, search for fantasy sports trade etiquette on YouTube if you haven't seen it. Otherwise, we're going to give you just a brief rundown real quick. Can I Yeah, I'll read go it. for it real quick. Just high points, not getting too in-depth with it. You know, go see the video for more. But this will help you be able to facilitate trades in your own league. And if nothing else, this is just how to be a decent, polite manager, right? All right, so first and foremost, if you're making any trades... Like, you want it to be fair and reasonable for everybody involved. You know, don't send something that you wouldn't accept yourself, okay? That's pretty obvious. Like, yeah. don't send out bullshit offers because people aren't going to take them, okay? Um, second, you know, you can't sit around waiting for trade offers to come to you. This is the time of the year, especially if you've got like eight days left in the trade scenario, or your trade window is closing. You get out there and you make the offers. You don't wait for people to come to you. You don't post to the message board and say, hey, hey, I want to make deals like because people don't give a shit what you want to do. You put an offer in front of them, then they have something to say. Then they can Absolutely. counter or, or say no. Number three, uh, you know, don't veto anything you see going by unless it's like an obvious collusion scenario. You know, you want to make your own trades. Maybe you missed a guy that got traded. Don't worry about it. Just keep rolling with the next scenario. Don't veto shit unnecessarily. Go plan keep B, plan C, whatever. Make it happen. Don't be a fucking dick and veto. Now... First, and, all right, so this, I almost want to bump this up the list. Um, you got to respond in some sort of positive manner and as quickly as possible, right? Like, Especially with the deadline coming up quickly. No, no, and here's the thing. If you're going to see these guys later on, like, you know, maybe you're in a dynasty league or maybe you play in a year-to-year league, but everybody gets back together next year. Don't be a dick. Don't, like, crap all over somebody's bad offer or whatever. Even if it is a really insulting offer, it just doesn't do you any good to, like, make an enemy. You know, don't burn any bridges. Keep the door open for next time because you're more likely to have a shot. You know, just, again, positive. Do yourself a favor, okay? Just leave the door open for future offers. All right, so the next thing, just everybody likes their own players, and everybody kind of has stuff they like and stuff they want to do just don't don't bad mouth another guy's players you know i mean that's not going to help you get the deal faster you know if nobody's I, going to believe you if you're like oh so and so sucks but you're trying to make an offer for him like no don't do it that's the wrong way to go about it no i mean you can have intelligent baseball discourse for instance i like i said i have just been searching high and low for short stops and let's be honest there's a very short list of short stops you want some of them I'm not willing to pay a whole lot for, and I'm not going to denigrate them necessarily to the owning player or the manager who owns them. But if they come back to me looking for like, you know, say you get an option or an offer that's like Starlin Castro for Justin Upton, right? You know, I mean, that's laughable, but you don't want to like drop a pile of bird shit on the other manager's head. Like, yeah, no, there's no fucking way you're trading Upton, even with his 250 batting average. 
for Starlin Castro, right? No, not gonna happen. But, but, you know, you just say, eh, I'm not really feeling it, eh, no thanks. And there's just, there's no need to like have a bad mouthing session, you know, cause it's not gonna get you that deal, so. Again, most people don't lead with their strongest offer, but you, you don't necessarily that. have to, but at least give them something to think about and maybe counter, or, you know, like let them know that you're serious. Leave the door open for discussion. discussion. Exactly, yeah. All right, so hopefully. All right, so yeah, hopefully, you know, the, the trade oh. etiquette helps, you know, look at that. Hopefully, you know, you've kind of already seen the trade etiquette video. This is stuff you should probably have known on your own by now. I mean, just basic playing experience you should know i mean if shit. you're listening to this podcast and you're you're a fantasy sports addict you probably like, don't this even is need all to hear common it. sense and you know we just got to put it out there for the beginner the newbie you know we're that's what fsaa is really all about is you know sharing our experience and knowledge with other managers so that we can all have better leagues and be more competitive active and victorious all right so active competitive victorious this is all of our plans active we're making trades um speaking of uh trades you might make ryan and i have a couple of ideas for like sell candidates buy candidates hold candidates this could be a you know you feel free to disagree with us you know you can comment on our video on youtube or comment on the feedback on the podcast anywhere you see us Feel free to just disagree or agree. Um, okay, but uh, before we start naming our list of our buy, sell, and hold players, let's just quickly go over like who you want to trade with in your leagues. Like if you're in oh. just a regular public league and like there's people that are inactive, like really it's not even worth trying to trade with those managers. Like yeah. Wait. Can we back up for one sec? Back up. All right. Whoop. All right, you you generally, yes, you want to ignore the inactive motherfuckers that are just sitting around in last place. You're walking a fine line here, and I don't typically have much luck in this arena, but I do see the merit in reaching out to that guy that's in 12th place, 14th place, 10th place, whatever it happens to be, who's kind of there, not really there, but he's got something you want. And he's out. He's just out. Like, you, you, you don't even know the last time he checked his teams. Yeah, it's a fine line. Like I said, is it shenanigans or is it just, like, being friendly? I always, it, again, it doesn't hurt to ask. This is like everything else. You know, I mean, the worst you're going to get is no. And you're already expecting a no. And the legal probably even say no if the other person says yes. But if you go to that guy who's in last place or almost last place or whatever... And you say, hey, look, are you out? Are you done? Are you not even playing anymore? You know, maybe you throw them a little bit of an offer that's a little friendly towards you, and they might take it. It's a shady gray area. The league will probably veto that trade, most likely, especially that's if you're you going... you got to make it to the point where it's at least comparable and you're not just... BS. Yeah, you don't want to have, like, just this total bullshit offer that's automatically vetoed. You want to at least try to make it make the numbers look good, right? Don't try to get the last place guy to trade you Mike Trout or Paul Goldsmith for four or five droppable players. Right. It's That's just not going to work, and your league's not going to respect you for it. But if it's uh, kind of friendly towards you, you can always try. It, there's no harm in asking, right? See, I don't like it. I mean, for me, inactive, dropped-out managers, like, let them be. Again, the odds are not in your favor in that type of deal. The odds are mostly that if somebody's inactive and they're gone, they're gone. They're not going to trade with I, you. I like to go the complete opposite route. This is smart. Find the manager that has two times as many ads and drops as anybody else in the league. The over-eager, hyper-aggressive manager. He's dropped everything you picked up and vice versa, and it's just been like a... A circus in terms of his you know, roster. He's already had 125 player moves for the year. He's already maxed them out somehow, right? So, again, like, yeah, there's a good chance he's going to counter offer your decent starter offer with some bullshit offer that isn't even close to what you're looking for. And you kind of got to work him a little bit back and forth, but at least he's going to get back to you in a timely manner and have discussions and can actually email and get things going with them and hopefully work out a deal that works out good for both of you. And this is the most common sense. I mean, if you're one of these, 
you know, pretty heavily active managers like we tend to be in your leagues, public leagues, year-to-year leagues, dynasty leagues, whatever. It just makes sense. You know, the two most active guys are bound to, like, set up a trade somehow at some point. And that's where I feel like I've had my best luck. Like, you got a guy that's just as knowledgeable, just as active, and just as dedicated as you are. You know, that's the whole point. Like, you know, maybe you work your way backwards from that. Like, okay, I didn't find a match with him, or he was asking way too much for something. You know, you kind of scale back from there. Who else has been active? Who else is at least, like, checking in and, like, saying hi or setting their lineup even sometimes in some of these leagues, right? Right. And so and again, look for activity. And again, uh, another point is if I'm one of the top three teams, I'm not going to trade with another one of the top three teams. Like, I'm not going to go against my biggest competition and risk making their team better At when the I'm trying to own. beat them. Yeah. I mean, granted, there is some incidences where – it just works out perfectly for both teams and like you just kind of make a handshake deal like okay it's stupid for us why are we helping each this? other yeah why are we helping each other but why is it, this is so obvious we have to do it right like so ideally it's more like i'm in first place but i still have a position to need i'm going to look to the sixth or seventh place team and try to give them a package deal and get one player better and Give them, fill up some of their holes so they can make that playoff push. And buy some flexibility for yourself in first place. Exactly. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's 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 go back to the buy, sell, hold situation. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is something, again, we we disagree. I All right, I'm going to start off. We've, we've said many times, this is the summer of youth. This is the most incredible summer ever for... Woo! Hype train! Hype train! This is... Really an exciting summer if you like prospects, rookies, that kind of thing. I'm going to say buy, sell, and hold Carlos Correa. Like, if you can buy him, buy the shit out of him. If you're able to sell him because you already have depth and you can afford to somehow, somehow, if you can afford to trade him and not miss a beat, get the moon for the guy, right? Go get that ace pitcher. Go get something because somebody's bound to be desperate for a shortstop. And if you're kind of in the middle... Hold all day. Like, what, again, honestly, who's trading Correa? Well, that's why I just say Correa is a hold because if I have him, I'm sure as hell not selling him. Right. And, again, I don't think I can give enough to buy him. How because, do you put a price on him? Yeah. You know, again, if you have Correa and it's a year-to-year redraft league, like, you probably added him because you don't have a good shortstop and You've been waiting he's the, whole the year. savior of your team and like you're just not going to move that. So for me, Cray is just just a whole straight you're, hold. You're lucky if you got him and be pissed if you don't. I'm pissed I don't. Um, one thing I do have is a lot of veterans. I don't normally go veteran heavy, but I seem to have a lot of veterans this year. Let's talk about uh, some of the high points of the veteran class. Let's say uh, A Rod. My gosh, like what what a year A Rod's having, and none of us expected that. Uh, Nelson Cruz, again, we're still waiting for the other shoe to drop on some of these players in terms of their PED suspensions and whatnot. And uh, Big Al Poopy, Albert Pujols, a lot of these guys are having like bounce back years or just like stellar, just awesome years. Um, are you are you buying, selling, or holding these guys? Um. Again, all three. I actually don't have any of those those players. Um, I would buy them, especially in a year year league or if in a dynasty league, if a lesser team had them and looking to get rid of them because they're not keeper type players. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd offer you know a top second round pick for any one of them. Maybe a first round pick if I still actually had any. Okay. But I'd have to say, you know, if I had them and I was competitive in the year-to-year league, I'm holding them. Okay, no, that's that's kind of where I'm at. And I, uh, if I was a rebuilding dynasty league team and sell. I had them, I'd sell. You sell, yeah, and you hope you can get face value, right? Like, I mean, if you can get something crazy out of a rod in a dynasty scenario or a keeper scenario, you got to try for it. So, I mean, if somebody's asking about a rod and a keeper or a dynasty, let them go. Sell them. I mean, get something good. See what you can get, right? Yeah. Uh, right. This uh, here's, next guy. Yeah, this is this one I'm curious about because I know you're very passionate about this. The grasses. <laughs> Jonas Cespedes. Um, I've actually read quite a bit of different uh, 
experts, as I'm doing the air, air quotes, quotes, experts, uh, telling to sell. These were the same experts that were calling them overrated going into the year. You know, three teams in two years, and I'll say know, I had them overrated slightly. Again, most people did. Like I was happy to get them for 19 bucks in my dynasty league. I, I'm a big Jonas Espedes fan, and I say the hell with the experts that are telling you to sell him. Like, oh, he's going to the Mets, which is one of the weakest lineups in all of baseball. Not a good hitting park. Not a good hitting park. Well, since he's been there, they've been doing nothing but kicking ass and hitting home runs and scoring a shit ton of runs. And I say he's a buy and hold candidate. All right, I'm only saying he's a hold. Like, if you got him, you got him. I'm not buying. Um, but, you know what? He might be more of that sort of intangible sort of factor that doesn't always completely translate to fantasy in terms of, like, his value to the Mets. Like, I think just having him is just like a shot in the ass for them. Like, woo, we're well, relevant. Look what happened to Oakland when they got rid of him. They just no went to the shitter. Like, well, but they, to be fair, they gave up other stuff too, like Donaldson. And, that was in the off season, though. They okay. traded uh, you to Boston, or Jonas to Boston in the middle of the year at the trade yeah. deadline, and their formidable lineup just went to shit because they didn't have that home run power guy. And really, if you got someone like him in the middle of your lineup. It changes everything for all the players. So Jonas is the new straw that stirs the drink. Kind exactly. Of like Reggie. He gave the Mets the shot in the arm that they needed. All right, let's 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 go young again. Um, what about like uh, Lance McCullers? He's been recently uh, sent down to the minors. This could be like saving an elbow situation. This could be maybe they're worried about him being effective down the stretch and they're trying to push for the playoffs. What do you feel about Lance McCullers? Just because he's getting dropped in a bunch of leagues. He got sent to the minors, and his last start, he gave up, got one out, and had an ERA of 128 or some shit like that. But that is why I say he buy. You buy him all day. Like, just because I think he's that good, and, like, they're just giving him some rest. He's probably not even going to pitch in the minors. They're just giving him a little breather, and he's going to come back up and get in the rotation. And I think for the return on investment, like, you don't have to give up much to get him. And I think he'll easily outperform whatever it is that you give up to get him. All right. Uh, personally, I'm selling the callers. I just, you know, if, if you got him sitting there, now he's on NA or just not helping you at all, I'm dropping him. I have dropped him. Uh, if somebody were to come to me with a trade, yeah, I'd take that. It probably doesn't even matter who it's for. It just... I don't know how long he's down. I don't know, like, what to expect. So I don't, you know, I love rookies, but, again, sometimes rookies you really don't know what to do, especially with a team like Houston where, I mean, they're that close to the playoffs. They're that close to possibly competing for a championship. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I'm saying sell. Ryan's saying buy. Let's go to another rookie, uh, Jock Peterson, L.A. You, uh... You like Peterson, but you're telling me to sell, right? Like, Yeah, Dynasty League, it's different. You buy, like, he's got great upside, great prospect, awesome rookie. Uh, he's probably not going to win the NL Rookie of the Year just because he's been so bad lately, which is why I'm saying to sell. You know, he hit that rookie wall. He's striking out too much. Like, he's... For the last like month, month and a half, he's sitting below 200 and only has a couple of home runs. Right. Like, yeah, he came out of the gate like gangbusters and was looking like the best rookie friggin' ever. Okay. And but I just not ever. He was up there. Like, you come like on, him. he was starting off friggin' awesome. Well, there were some trout comparisons that I did not make personally, but um, all right, let's let's talk pitching. Can we talk pitching for a second? Um, we got Chris Archer and Corey Kluber, uh, both American League pitchers. Personally, I would sell both. I don't love selling Archer, but again, if you don't necessarily need the pitching and you can go get some hitting that you need, I like the idea of selling Archer just because I, I think the Rays are due for regression or due for shutdown, just bad news. It's the Rays. I mean, it's not like... If Rays aren't the Mets, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but you, how do you feel about these guys? Um, again, Archer, 
He's I, been so good. I don't even have him on the list except for maybe a hold. You know, if you have him, you hold him. Be happy because you know he was. He's uh, been so good. You know, 130, 150 ranked players. So you got him later in the draft, and he's putting up second round value. And if you're able to sell him and get a bat that's a top 25 bat. Yeah, okay, then maybe if you need him. But, again, I just don't think you're going to get enough of a return for what he's worth. I mean, again, his K per nines through the roof. His ERA is incredible. Like, I'm sorry, you you hold on to Archer. Uh, Corey Kluber, I say sell. All I'm right. not nearly as big of a fan of him as I am Archer. He's older. But, again, you skewed Dynasty. We both kind of do, I think, right? Like, yeah. So you're selling, I'd, I'd sell Kluber kind of across the board, personally, but, I mean, I just, I don't, is there a league where people don't need pitching? So if you have extra pitching and you can sell it and you you can get away with selling it, I feel like, especially somebody like Kluber, right, you, you, yeah. you sell. Um, all right, let's, we're going real young here, I guess. Uh, Chris Bryant, another rookie. Uh He's been down a little bit. We're both saying buy across the board. If like, anybody in your league is actually selling them, nobody in not. our leagues aren't selling them. There's nobody selling them. Let's just but, say that. There's nobody selling Bryant. But if somebody is, buy. Buy. That, you know, just go get Chris Bryant and hope for that really strong push for the playoffs from the Cubs. Hope for that, like, nah, this ain't ending like that. You know, like, he's got some pride. Like, he's going to, I mean, again. He, this, he's slumping right now and maybe. You know, the team doesn't need them, and they got third baseman covered, and you can get them. Okay. That's it. All right. Uh, here's a guy you love, and you have recently traded. This is a guy who I would either trade all shares of or keep all shares of. For me, I'm either holding or selling. And I think I'm leaning, especially in a year-to-year scenario, I'm leaning sell on Steven Strasburg. Well, again, I think you're just completely 180 off base, like – why are you selling Strasburg when he was a top 25 player and you're not even going to get close to that on return because he's been injured and risky and like... Because you didn't... That's the whole point. You didn't sell him already. This is your last option. This is the trade deadline. This is your last option to get something out of a guy who very well could be breaking down. We've seen guys that were super good See, first two I, I, years. I disagree. He's buying because, again, the whole point of this buy, sell, hold is... You buy players at the lowest value and you sell them at their highest. And Strasburg is at his lowest value he's ever been in, which is why I say you buy like he starting tonight or tomorrow. You know, getting... looked good in his rehab start. And I think the managers that have him are so fed up with them that they're willing to just get rid of them. That's the point I'm making. Get rid of them. Like, I think you are doing yourself a favor to get rid of them. If you got a position in need, you can get something for him. You can get some guy like Ryan to pay high for Strasburg, who we don't, he has ghost injuries this whole year. This just, and again, Dynasty is always, always different from a year to year. In a year to year, all day I am I mean, getting rid again, of Strasburg. I mean, again, I... Just traded Steven Strasburg for Robinson Cano in our Dynasty League. It's madness. I disagreed with it. And I'm telling you to sell Strasburg. Again, it was madness, but I went all in, and I needed a second baseman with power. And, again, he had a stomach virus in the early year, and that could have affected He's his He's got age. a list of excuses for his poor performance a mile long. And you know about excuses, they're like assholes, we all got them, right? Yeah. Uh, or doesn't have, maybe. We, 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 this is the one case we might actually agree on, I think. And I don't know if it's just because we both live in Arizona, I don't think so. No. We're not huge D-backs fan necessarily as uh, Arizonans, but A.J. Pollock, he has been just awesome this year. And great return on investment, uh, all-star, just great, just A.J. Pollock is, like, one of the best Roto players you could have this year, honestly. Like, if you had A.J. Pollock and uh, Chris Archer, like, wow, you got some killer return on value. You're probably leading your league, right? Especially in a Roto format. If you didn't fuck up your beginning rounds, absolutely. And you got that kind of value out of late picks? Wow. So, A.J. Pollock, I'm holding. I'm buying. Like, I wish I had A.J. Pollock in our Roto league, our Roto keeper. 
But yeah, so would you agree, hold, buy? Well, again, I've actually seen Pollock moved in a few of the leagues that I'm in, and every single one that I saw that he got moved for, I thought the team that was getting him was getting a hell of a deal. Okay. Like, I I just don't think the name's sexy. I don't know. Undervalued Arizona, whatever. But if you look at what he did last year before his injury, like, he's just doing the same thing over again. So this isn't, like, out of nowhere fluke. No, no. Well, this is what he's done throughout his entire minor league career. Again, he's one of those guys who was kind of a late bloomer, a late call to the show, if you will. Um, But, yeah, I mean, those of us who own A.J. Pollock, as I do, you know, I, I again, I was trying to sell high. I've been trying to sell. Nobody, it's that name value thing. Like, I just, I don't know if it's, like, hidden in the shadows of Arizona or not hidden in the shadows in the bright sun. People, he's just whitewashed. You can't even see him because it's so hot and bright here in Arizona, right? Like, yeah. So, A.J. Pollock, if you need outfield, a fourth outfielder, a center fielder, something like that, A.J. Pollock, I think, is just an awesome trade target, especially because, again, like, he's just, People uh, overlook him. I don't know does why. It, uh, any league that I can, I'm going to be trying to trade for Pollock. He is my bye, bye, bye. bye. Woo! Are we? Are we Kramer? Kramer. Kramer. The money I got my yeah. little bull squishy yeah. thing, and I'm <laughs> squeezing it, yelling bye, bye, bye. bye, bye. All right. Woo! AJ Pollock. All right. So everybody, go out buy AJ Pollock if you don't already have him, uh, and if you do have him, hold, hold like. To, tomorrow's never coming. I don't know. Just hold him forever because you You're got AJ Pollock. You're not going to get enough out of him. No, because you just be you. assholes like Ryan lowballing you and me lowballing you because we want our AJ Pollock. Absolutely. Everybody's overlooking him. Hold on to him if you have him and buy him if you don't. So Again, thanks for joining us. Uh, if there's any other players that you think are buy or sell or hold candidates, Send us an email, make a comment, you know, let us know if you think we're way off base. Yeah. And again, who do you agree with more, me or Tommy? Like, we obviously disagreed on a lot of these players. Who's right, who's wrong? Help us set each other straight. I'd, I'd like a little feedback if I'm right or wrong. Ryan, you? Not that I care what anybody says because I know I'm right. Yeah, but I feel like I'm, I'm more right. And if I had, like, the internet on my side telling you you're wrong, eh, you know, hey, anybody in, in my corner, If it's on in. the internet, it must be true. Exactly, exactly. Anything we say on the internet, anybody who backs me up here on the internet, it's true. And I'll give you a shout-out on Twitter. How about that? All right, fair All enough. All right, speaking of Twitter, uh, as always, you guys can check us out, fantasysportsaddicts.com. Our Twitter feed is at letter F, letter S, the word double, letter A, at FS, double A. Same thing for Instagram, Facebook, all the other shit all over the internet, at FS, double A. Um, and in the meantime, you know, send us your questions. Keep winning your leagues. Stay active. Be competitive. Win at any fucking cost. Any cost. Any cost. And we'll close with our Fantasy Sports Serenity Prayer. Ryan, can you lead it? Absolutely. All right. All right. Fantasy Gods! There are a few. Please grant me the serenity to set my ideal lineups and not leave Grand Slams on the bench. Two in a week. (laughs) Please grant me the courage to add drop Uh, aggressively. And what we're all here for today. Right? The wisdom. The wisdom. To make good trades. And we hope you do the same. We're trying to. Deadline's coming up, everybody. Get out there, make some good trades. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Trade deadline! Woo!